welcome to It's Easier Than You Think. Today, we're going to be making a fabulous dinner for your date. We've all been there. You're dating someone, or maybe you're married to someone, and you want to make them a really romantic meal. So you go to the internet, and you punch in romantic meal, and come up with things like rack of lamb or truffle oil. And so you just give up. But today, I think you'll see that with the right ingredients and the right techniques, making a fabulous dinner for your date is easier than you think. So to start off our dinner date, we're going to start with some wonderful goat cheese stuffed mushrooms. They are just delicious. Um, all you'll need to do is get some large white mushrooms like this. And I've just cleaned them off, washed them with some water, and probably get around 12. Um, and then what we're going to do is just take the stem out. Um, so it looks like this inside. And usually the stem will just kind of pop right off real nicely, like that. So it's real easy. You're just going to pop the stem off. Then you have these little mushroom caps, and this is what we're going to stuff. But first, we are going to saute them in a little bit of olive oil because um, that is actually when we're going to cook them. The final, we, we never really cook them aside from just sauteing them. After we saute, they will just broil them for a little while. So. All you need to do is just turn on your fire and put a little bit, about a tablespoon or so, olive oil in there. And um, let that heat up for a minute, and then we're going to pop the mushroom caps right inside. It probably take about five minutes for them to brown. So the first ingredient for the stuffing for the mushrooms is some green onions. And I've just washed them and then kind of peeled off the top layer. And now, as you'll see, you can even make this dish even if you're not very good with a knife. I'm just going to use some kitchen shears and just kind of snip off the green onions into this a little bit of some hot olive oil. And if you prefer, of course, you can chop them up with a knife. You just want them in nice small pieces. And you'll want about a fourth of a cup. There we go. Now I'm just going to saute these for a minute. Just kind of stir it up with a spatula. And then the next ingredient we're going to add is some pecans. And I have just um, minced these pecans in the food processor until it's a nice, fine texture. And um, all you'll need to do is just add about a fourth a cup in with the onions. About a fourth a cup. Then we're going to add some breadcrumbs. And to make these breadcrumbs, I just got a, a white piece of bread, tore it up into pieces, and then put the pieces in the food processor and processed it until it's this nice, soft breadcrumb mixture. And if you don't feel like doing that, if you don't have a food processor, you can just buy the breadcrumbs from the grocery store. But I kind of prefer this because they're, you know, nice and fresh. And um, so then we're just going to also add in about a fourth a cup of the breadcrumbs. There we go. And the final ingredient, or almost final, is some Parmesan cheese. And this is just some grated Parmesan cheese that I got at the grocery store. I'm just going to put in about a fourth a cup of that too. I love Parmesan cheese, and it is going to make these mushrooms taste great. So then you've got all that in there. Just kind of stir that up. So now it's time to stuff the mushrooms with some goat cheese and then top it off with the stuffing. To put the goat cheese in, you're just going to use a fork and, um, you know, take off some and fill it in the mushroom cap. And goat cheese, I was a little bit afraid of it at first because just it sounds a little weird, but I promise you it tastes great got a nice kind of mild salty flavor and then we're going to add some stuffing right on top of the goat cheese kind of push it in there with your hand and I've got some done up over here on a cookie sheet that I've lined with some tin foil and then I put some olive oil down so the mushrooms don't stick so you go ahead and put your mushrooms on there I'll do one more And top that off. 
with some stuffing. And finally, we're going to add a little bit of Parmesan cheese on top. Let me grab that. Here we go. So you'll just wanna sprinkle a little more Parmesan cheese right on top. And then we're gonna put it in the oven for about two to three minutes under the broiler. And the broiler has heat coming from the top. So you'll wanna be very careful when you put it in the oven to watch it because it can burn very easily in the broiler. Now I'm just gonna leave the door open while it's on broil and just kinda of keep an eye on it so it doesn't burn. Okay, now that we have served up the mushrooms, we're gonna start on the couscous. And this is just about the easiest thing you can make. Um, all you need is about two cups of chicken broth. Um, you could use water, but I like chicken broth because it gives it a little more flavor. So I'm just gonna measure out two cups of this chicken broth. And then I have a nice um, saucepan here. Then I'm gonna pour the broth right in there. And then to give the uh, couscous even some more flavor, I have here some store-bought pesto. And pesto is basically just olive oil, basil, Parmesan cheese, and um, garlic. You can buy several different types of pesto. There's, you know, poblano chili um, pesto, and there's salsa pesto, and there's cilantro pesto. So really, it's, it's basically just olive oil and some sort of herbs with a Parmesan cheese and garlic, usually but it has a wonderful flavor. You can make it at home if you want, but it's, it's a little bit quicker and easier just to buy the store-bought, and it, it really is good. So I'm gonna put about three tablespoons of the pesto in with the chicken broth. And this is gonna give our couscous a great flavor. There we go. Now I'll stir that up a little bit. And then we're gonna heat this up over about a medium heat on the stove. There we go. See if we got it lit, okay. And one thing that I usually do is, is um, have a little, a little pinch bowl of salt right here by your stove. So if you wanna add a little bit of salt, um, you know, to season it, you can do that. And you might even add a little bit of pepper too. It's really nice to have a little bowl of salt in your ground pepper shaker right there by your stove. So while this is heating up, I'm gonna measure out about one and a third cups of couscous. And you can get um, whole wheat or just the traditional. This is just traditional. And I'm um, just gonna spoon some out into my measuring cup. Um, so couscous is very versatile. You can add things like, you know, sun-dried tomatoes or various herbs. You could add some nuts and a vinaigrette or some, some uh, citrus flavors for a salad, a couscous salad. Um, it's really just up to your imagination. And as you'll see in a minute, it's really just the easiest thing to cook. All we're going to do is once this, the broth heats up, we're going to just um, take it off the heat, pour the couscous right into the broth, and cover it for five minutes, and that's really all you do. Let me turn this up a little bit. There's no cooking involved other than just putting the couscous into the liquid. And I love this with the pesto in it because this too has the great um, smells. It's garlic and, and basil, and um, it's also gonna make your house smell really good. So, okay, while we're waiting on that, we're going to get ready to make the sea bass. And um, sea bass is a great um, kind of mild white fish. There really is no substitution for it. It's a little bit pricey, so you could use something else, maybe like grouper or um, tilapia you could use but sea bass is one of my favorites and I think you'll date, your date will really enjoy it. Now the chicken broth is nice and hot, so I'm just gonna take it off the heat and go ahead and add the couscous. Just pour that right in. 
Now sometimes when you're making couscous, it's a good idea to kind of coat it with a little bit of olive oil, um, which you could do in this case, but since the pesto has some olive oil already in it, you don't really need to. So I'm just going to kind of make sure that's all covered by the chicken broth and then put a nice tight lead, lid on it to hold in the moisture and we'll let that sit for about five to seven minutes. And while that's cooking, we're going to move on to the sea bass. Okay, so I have a nice piece of sea bass here and to cut sea bass or any kind of fish, you really just need a nice sharp knife. And I'm going to go ahead and cut that into about two portions. I bought uh, about a pound or about three quarters pound and then if you split that in half, that's probably enough for two people. There we go. Now what we're going to do to cook the sea bass, we're just going to bake it in some foil little packets. So I think you'll really like this. Okay. All you'll need is some tin foil and we're going to tear that off into about a 12 by 12 square like this. Now in the square we're going to add the fish obviously and then on top to kind of match the flavors of the couscous that we made earlier I'm going to add some more pesto. So actually first I'm going to do a little pinch of salt and pepper and then I'll put the pesto. So whenever you're using your salt pinch bowl, you want to make sure your hands are clean so you're not contaminating anything. Sounds like my oven's preheating. I'm preheating the oven to 450 on the bake uh, setting. I'll put some pepper on there. And then add oh, about a teaspoon or two teaspoons of pesto right there on top. It's going to give it a really great flavor. Then on top of the pesto, we're going to put some grated vegetables. And the reason I grated them is because you want them to have them thin enough so they'll cook um, in the oven in, in about eight minutes. So um, I've got some red bell peppers, some carrots, zucchini, and summer squash. And you could use any combination of those or even something different. So I'm just going to kind of sprinkle these vegetables right on top of the pesto and the fish. You can use just as, as, you know, as much or as little as you want. Then on top of that, I'm going to add a little more salt and pepper and some olive oil and some white wine, which is going to give it a great flavor. So I'll put a little more salt and pepper on there. And before you drizzle the olive oil or the wine on there, you want to go ahead and make your little packet. And to do that, you just kind of want to fold up the sides. And then on one side, you're going to go ahead and roll it up so the liquid won't leak, leak out on that side. And then we'll do the other side in a minute. So I'm going to just sprinkle about, oh, half a tablespoon of wine, I mean of olive oil, maybe a little less just to kind of keep it moist. Okay. And then sprinkle a little bit of wine on there. If you feel more comfortable, you could, you know, put it in a spoon first, but I don't mind just kind of drizzling it on there. There we go. And now we're going to finish that off by just wrapping it up in a little packet. Now I've got two of my fish pieces of fish ready to go. I'm just going to put them in the oven at 450 and they'll bake for about 10 to 12 minutes. All right, let's check the couscous and see how that's doing. Oh man. Oh, it smells great. I think it's almost ready. I'm going to let it sit for just a little bit longer while we move on to the dessert. And see, it's, it's been so easy. We've already made stuffed mushrooms. We're baking our sea bass with vegetables. The couscous was the easiest, and that's almost done. So now we are about ready to make a, a wonderful chocolate dessert, which I call P.S. I Love You Chocolate Pudding. To make the chocolate pudding, you'll need three-fourths cups of heavy cream. We're going to use a quarter cup of white granulated sugar, a little bit of vanilla, 
and five ounces of semi-sweet chocolate. Oh, and you'll also need three egg yolks. So to start out, I've just got a saucepan here. I'm gonna put it over about kind of medium heat. I'm gonna pour in the three-fourths cup of heavy cream. And to that, I'll add a quarter cup of white sugar. There we go. And finally, a little bit of vanilla. Measure it over here just in case I spill. There we go. And now I'm just going to stir this mixture up until it gets a little bit um, thicker. I think I'll use a rubber spatula so I'm not making that noise and scraping the pan too. All right. Now while that is um, heating up, we're going to get three egg yolks. And to get an egg yolk out of an egg, the way I usually do it is just crack it over the sink and let the white kind of run through my fingers with the yolk in my hand and then just put the, put the yolk into a bowl like this. So like I said, I'm just going to crack the egg open and kind of let the white slip through my fingers and then put the yolk in the bowl. And I'll do that again. Again, let the white slip through and then add the yolk. Okay, so I've got three egg yolks. Wash that egg off my hands. And what you're going to do is just whisk that up um, real well using a wire whisk. Or if you didn't have one, a wire whisk, you could just use a fork. So I'm going to whisk that up and we'll head back over and see how our cream and sugar is doing. Okay, I'm just going to bring this cream and sugar mixture to a simmer over medium heat. And once that is simmering, I'm going to take it off the heat and then um, kind of spoon by spoon, spoon it into the egg yolks. And the reason you can't just add the egg yolks to the cream is because you'll actually cook the egg yolks in this, in this hot cream. So we've got to be real careful about um, spooning the cream into the yolks. I think we're about ready to do that. I'm just going to take this off the heat and then about a tablespoon at a time, just spoon some cream into the egg yolks like that. And as you're going, you'll want to just kind of whisk that up. And we'll keep going. Now, this is really, really, really chocolatey pudding. It's basically just, um, you know, chocolate, cream, and sugar. So it's got a, for people who love chocolate, it's, it's delicious. Um, and so you need to find out, though, if your date likes chocolate or if they're more of a, you know, vanilla or um, maybe they just like some ice cream for dessert. And so if, if your date likes something special, you know, be sure and do that. But if he or she's a chocolate person, this is a great dessert and it's really easy. Okay, I'm going to add a little more now. Almost done, and I'll pour the last bit in there. Now, if that's all mixed up, I'm going to give it one more whisk. And then we're going to add it right back to the same pot. And kind of let this heat up until it thickens. And you'll notice once it starts cooking it, how it gets thicker. Um, and once it's thickened, we're going to add some very, very finely chopped uh, semi-sweet chocolate. And then all you need to do is stir it up and you are ready to go. So let's get the chocolate ready. 
To chop up the chocolate, I'm gonna just use my food processor, and I use my food processor all the time. I mean, I'm using it for this. I also used it to chop the pecans today, also to make the breadcrumbs. So if you're gonna buy one thing for your kitchen, I definitely think you should get a food processor. Um, to do the chocolate, I've just got some baker's, um, you know, baking chocolate here. It's semi-sweet, and you're gonna need five ounces. So each of these is an ounce, and sometimes some of the, the other brands of chocolate may come in a two ounce, um, you know, bar like this, but you can just break it up accordingly. So you'll need five ounces. Just gonna put those right in here. And you know you could you could use a knife or try to grade the chocolate, but this is just really so much easier. So this will be three ounces, four ounces, and we'll do one more. Okay, now I'm just going to grab the lid, put it on top, and turn the food processor on. Okay, looks like that's about ready. Oop, I think I'll do it one more time. Okay, you wanna have really, really, really small pieces of chocolate because um, you want it to melt when you mix it in with the cream mixture immediately. So, I think this is ready. Now the cream and sugar mixture um, and eggs is nice and thick. It's almost like a pudding texture. And I do want to note that while you are cooking this over the stove, you need to be watching it and stirring it very frequently. Otherwise it could burn or it'll get kind of lumpy. So um, make sure you stir it while you're cooking it. And the next step is to add the chocolate to the pudding mixture. Just gonna pour the chocolate right in there like that and fold in the chocolate and the heat from the, the cream and the eggs will melt the chocolate and that is just all you have to do. So I've got the sea bass out of the oven and the nice thing about aluminum foil is that it, it cools down really quickly. So just a couple minutes after you take it out of the oven, um, you can go ahead and touch the pouch and open it up like this. Oh man that wine and the olive oil and all the flavors with the pesto. Oh, it looks so good. Can't wait to try it. Just gonna grab a spatula. And actually first, let's put it on top of some of the couscous, which is, should be ready over here. And um, all we're gonna do with this is just kind of fluff it up with a fork. Cause it's, it's already cooked and we're just gonna fluff it up. Now if you happen to have any lumps in your couscous, you can just kind of mash them out with a fork. And I'm going to serve some over here on the plate. Move my plate over here. Put some right there in the middle. There we go. And then we're going to put the fish right on top. Nice big piece of sea bass with all the vegetables and pesto. And then we're gonna pour this wonderful sauce that was the wine and the olive oil and all the flavors. We're just gonna pour that right on top. Oh man, this looks great. And last, I'm just gonna top it with a little bit of fresh basil. I got some fresh basil actually just growing in my garden outside. And I'm gonna use my kitchen shears here and just kind of cut some basil up in little pieces. And just kind of let that fall around the plate and over the fish. And this basil will go with the great, the pesto flavors that we put on the fish and in the couscous. Do one more leaf. Oh 
All right. So we've got our stuffed mushrooms here ready to go, our sea bass with couscous, and this luscious chocolate dessert. I think your date is going to be swept off her feet. Thanks for joining us on It's Easier Than You Think. Today we made goat cheese stuffed mushrooms for an appetizer, baked sea bass with vegetables and pesto served over an herbed couscous, and P.S. I Love You chocolate pudding for dessert. If you would like any of these recipes, email me at itseasierthanyouthink at yahoo.com and I'll be more than happy to send them to you. I hope you learn that with the right ingredients and the right techniques, making a fabulous dinner for your date is easier than you think.